And just for anyone who's just joining us on the recording, this is a climate action coach from program from Transition Salt Spring presenting our wood stove upgrade program uh, here on Salt Spring and the Southern Gulf Islands. Yes, welcome. My name is Rob Lowry and welcome to our introductory chat about the wood stove program. This is our, our um, poster and you can see that we're funded by BC Lung and the BC Ministry of Environment and Climate Energy and, Stra and Climate Change Strategy. And this is all part of Transition Salt Springs um, efforts towards addressing the imminent climate crisis that we are facing and, and actions that we all need to take individually. And so I wanted to ask Darlene to address the uh, where this all started from in terms of the Climate Action Plan 2.0. Yeah, sure, just, uh, just briefly. Transition Salt Spring about a year and a half ago now published the Climate Action Plan for specifically for Salt Spring Island, although it has a lot of relevancy for the other Southern Gulf Islands since we do tend to share very important ecosystem um, trait characteristics amongst the Southern Gulf Islands. So um, seeing that the, there was very little um, climate action that was regional specific or um, specific to our islands, uh, we decided that we needed to create our own here on Salt Spring. And since that time, that's really been guiding all of our efforts here at Transition Salt Spring. We decided to uh, pivot our organization to deal specifically with climate change and climate action. There are 250 recommendations in our localized climate action plan. If you haven't seen it, I really, I'll probably put a link in the chat for you, or you can feel free to email me at any time. It's Darlene at transitionsaltspring.com. Um, for a copy of it. It really has um, an incredible amount of data, maps, um, analysis, and recommendations. And those 250 recommendations are really what's fueling this organization to push our community by working collaboratively to act quickly, both to reduce um, greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by the year 2030. So time is now that we're in 2022, we have eight years left to get to a 50% 50, 50 reduction in our localized greenhouse gas emissions. But as well, this climate action plan is very much focused on adaptation. So adaptation being, of course, as you all know, how do we actually uh, respond to the climate um, emergencies and climate shifts that are going on currently and the ones that we're expecting uh, in the near and, and a little bit in the distant future, uh, human-wise, uh, not so long uh, in the in the future that we're looking towards lots of changes uh, around drought, around fire risk, around la lack of fresh water, sea level rise, um, supply chain interruptions, climate refugees, all of these kinds of changes that we know are coming to our region. So we're trying to prepare for those, all of those things <laughs> all at once um, here on Salt Spring Island. So the Climate Action Coach Program as I said in my introduction, is really that entry point for a lot of folks who might not know what they can do about sea level rise, but they do know that they can switch to an electric car or install a heat pump in their home or put in a freshwater rainwater catchment system on their property to um, help prevent drought and have their own uh, freshwater supplies um, for now and also in case of emergencies. So things like that we've been uh, focusing on as ways to try to activate our community that way. And we're lucky enough to have Rob Lowry here with us uh, to be able to lead the climate action coach portion of things. And today is really mostly about the wood stove upgrade program. Uh, maybe you wanna say a little bit more Rob about the, uh, the, the rest of the offerings from the climate action coach program. Climate Action Coach Program uh, began, really got uh, underway in July, August of last year. And we um, have been um, bringing various rebate programs to the awareness of people. Um, the province, the federal government, um, and ourselves uh, in cooperation with the CRD and various ministries have presented uh, an array of rebate programs that to cover everything from EVs to, um, uh, to heat pumps, to uh, rainwater catchment, um, to home retrofits. We, we're, we're trying to enable and make it easier for people to access the information and, and the steps needed for them to start getting underway with 
addressing in an, in an indiv individual basis um, the need for them to act on climate climate uh, crisis that we're, we're experiencing. Um, so here we now arrive at, and, and as a result, we've done webinars and we will do more webinars too. Um, and we've um, met some terrific people along the way in all these fields, including, including uh, uh, some other related that we have not delved into yet, such as, as solar um, but, uh, and, and septic. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff we're going to be able to get into in, in the um, coming months and years. Uh, now I want to just get on to our wood smoke issues that we have. And now I have some, I've dug up some pages online that I just helped me illustrate the, um, the nature of wood smoke uh, and our concerns about it. And so this is a provincial page that draws attention to the fact that 27% of our emissions in BC are from wood smoke home heating and that the the health concerns that they present with 27 percent uh, these particulate matter of 2.5 emissions in BC um, is the provincial standard we know and we've lived this probably individually that there are pockets in our communities where there are times when uh, wood smoke becomes quite a concern to us as just residents in our neighborhoods. The nature of wood smoke is, is that it is, uh, is made up of, this is the federal site, several pollutants, including the particulate matter, uh, carbon monoxide, volatile organic co compounds, and, and these, uh, I won't even say the word, PAHs, <clears throat> which are all health concerns that involve harm, significant harm to our health, of which I don't think we were all that aware of back in the, in the, uh, the, the old days of uh, blissful ignorance when we just thought the smell of a wood stove was a wonderful thing. Um, I'm just going to find my next page just here. Um, this is our website page that will that is currently up on the wood stove upgrade rebate. And basically that page is there for people to put their names down as being interested in this rebate program. And they'll be among the first to know of when the rebate begins. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be April 4th. So thank you. You are the first to know. Uh, we'll be launching it at that time. Um, this is a brochure we'll be using to distribute to our all of our, our participating retailers and community groups. Uh, and you'll see it gives a, a, a very general description. One page that I wanted to draw your attention to is this signature page. And this affects folks regarded, regarding uh, recycling and wet inspections. There's a signature page there that's required for you to sign. And so we're, we're suggesting that uh, people bring these brochures with them and as they return their wood, their, their damaged wood stove, which is what it has to be disabled, or they get their wet inspections that they get signatures at that point. And that satisfies some of the criteria for the, um, for the actual rebate to be completed. Um, these are some of the stoves uh, that are meant to be replaced. There's quite a variety. There's outdoor wood boilers. There's there's furnaces. Uh, there's there's yikes. Um, we're, we're just going to find out all kinds of what was out there. I think in terms of uh, how people are heating their homes. This is the this is the uh, approval pre-approval uh, form that people will first engage with in terms of getting. Uh, information about the wood stove rebate program and basically uh, what it does is it lays out the very basics of what is available there you see a $750 rebate for replacing a wood burning appliance with a heat pump or a $300 rebate for replacing an outdoor wood boiler with an EPA or CSA certified pellet boiler 
uh, your, your wood's a $300 rebate for replacing an old inefficient wood burning appliance with a new EPA 2020 CSA certified wood burning appliance. So this, this is um, a simplified list of what is really available um, and uh, in terms of rebates. The amounts are being boosted by um, various retailers who have offered to kick in and they, we call them participating retailers. They are um, Fresco who's offering a hundred dollar discount on the purchase of a heat pump. That's the first 15 completed rebates. We've got the Home Design Center over on Salt Spring uh, with a $50 discount on the purchase of an EPA and included in that now we can add Galliano Trading and it looks like uh, Pender Island uh, Home Building Center is also going to join us in that $50 uh, discount. Perfect. We also have uh, Moet's Home Hardware offering and also Pender uh, maybe can do, in joining us in this as well, Pender Home Hardware, with discounts on on moisture meters for wood and wood wood stackers and eco fans. So there's discounts there. These are a great way for us to involve local business community and for folks to go in and give them their business as well as to bring attention to the fact that we are interested in people learning how to and a big aspect of this program is is responsible wood burning and that means dry wood it means um, burning the right kind of wood and so if you are going to do wood burning you, you need to you need to do it right and there's a program called um, burn it smart which uh, Nanaimo has a great page on this with uh, a video some videos and uh, um, uh, we will be promoting that responsible burning and that of course we, we hope to also uh, um, involve the fire local fire departments because that of course is an interest of the, theirs as well this is the so once you've completed the i'll just go back to the the uh, pre-approval form so this will give people an idea of what they're getting into so they're and they they know the parameters of the program so that they don't go out and buy some uh, some wood stove and all of a sudden decide, oh, I never knew that this one didn't qualify, or I didn't know that I actually had to get rid of my old stove. In fact, in this program, you do have to get rid of your old stove. You'll never see that stove again. It's going to be damaged and recycled. And if you want to replace that with another wood stove, you can do that, or you can replace it with a heat pump, which is a cleaner alternative. And so that is the intent of this is to clean up our, our, our local air and of course emissions as well. This is the actual rebate program application. And uh, you'll again see uh, the various types of uh, wood uh, 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 heating appliances that are available, including actually an electric fireplace insert. Um, there are conditions such as only one rebate per house and there's a list of conditions there. And then here are the the necessary you know, contact information, as well as uploading of photos, photos of signatures, photos of your old wood stove in place, photos of your new wood stove in place, um, uh, a, wet, a wet inspection report. And so these are, and, and yes, a proof of a completed wood smoke education course. Uh, this one is a course that is, is offered uh, using the provinces uh, is made to, uh, available the Fraser Basin's wood smoke education course, which is which is about a forty to sixty minute course on burning wood, and uh, so it, you you may find that a, a, an awkward step in the process, but you do learn something out of it. It's it's quite informative. Um, so that all, is another all, part all, of this big process. All online, hey, Rob, Rob, that's all online, that course. That's all online, yeah. yeah. And we so require mm -hmm. uh, a document that, that, that uh, shows that you have completed that course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In about 40 to 60 minutes to take the course and do the quiz at the end and then 
carry on from there. So while while it is a, a, a an interesting step that they've uh, made mandatory as part of this program, um, it's not you know completely onerous. It takes about an hour. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to mention that we are we're always promoting and wanting to put people in touch with Better Homes BC or Clean Clean BC and the Better Homes BC as you can see Better Homes BC uh, rebates which offer a huge variety of, um, of rebates that, um, as you can see, you can just start narrowing down your search. And so we really uh, encourage people to look there for rebates. And of course, there's also the Canada Greener Homes Grants, which out of these two, you can save up to about $6,000 if you want to jump through all of the hoops. There's more hoops in the, uh, the Canada Greener Homes Grant and, and a little easier uh, with clean BC, especially if you want to put in a, uh, a heat pump, which is a, a major push on, on the part of uh, Better Homes BC. And we're helping them with that. So you, those you are- talk, Can you just talk about stacking the Better <clears throat> BC, BC heat pump rebate sure. with this current, with this more um, localized one that we're offering? Sure. So you can, you can stack federal, first of all, federal and provincial rebates. You can also stack this rebate that we're offering. So an example of uh, stacking a rebate um, in our case with the wood, wood stove is, is if you were to um, do windows and door refits and, and insulation and do a, a wood stove upgrade, you would get all those together. Or if you were to um, uh, involve the, the federal and the provincial programs together, you could get um, a grant from them for a heat pump and also a grant for, uh, from Clean BC for a heat pump. They would, they would be able to, you do, you basically double your rebate return. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's a lot of ways to work it. And, you know, I find uh, one of the best folks that I, I end up encouraging people to talk to are the, the energy coaches up in the top right hand corner, that phone number. They're very accessible. You rarely have to wait. Mm -hmm. And they're very conversational. And, and they can really help you walk through some of your questions. Uh, it's not a bad idea to just try to figure it out your first using their research or re rebate search tool. But once you've look through and you've developed your questions, they're excellent to talk to about uh, furthering your questions on how to maximize what you want for your home. Because mm -hmm. this rebate really is, it does seem as though the, the wood stove upgrade program, you can see the big difference between a rebate for a heat pump 750 and a wood stove upgrade, of which is 300. Plus, plus some other incentives from the local dealers. There's, you know, there's a significant jump there. So obviously, the the province and and BC Lung is, you know, the major incentive there is to upgrade to a wood to a um, heat pump. So if you stacked the R rebate would, uh, sorry, heat pump rebate along with the Clean BC um, heat pump rebate, there's some significant savings that you can get in there. It, well, if yeah. Darling, if you if you did that, you could actually get seventeen fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were uh, if you had a, a an electricity dominant uh, heat heated home mm -hmm. baseboard, for example, and you got rid of your wood stove and applied for the heat pump with us, and also applied for the heat pump through Better Homes BC, you get seventeen fifty mm -hmm. in um, in a rebate. Now. Gulf Islanders have to decide whether or not they want to live without a, heat, a wood stove, um, as we all experience power outages. Um, one way I've thought about doing this is I would maybe change out my wood stove this year and get a new one, and next year get the rebate on the on the uh, heat pump. Mm. Uh, because if I was to do it, just get rid of the wood stove and uh, for the heat pump, then I have a heat pump. That's great. But then what do I do when the power goes out? Mm -hmm. um, any examination I've done on generators for heat pumps, uh, you need a very powerful generator because it surges. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be the best thing to have without some kind of heat 
mm -hmm. uh, other alternate source backup. I know some people use the generator though to uh, power their baseboard electric heaters so that they, yeah. they then comes from their electric baseboards. So you could in theory, get rid of your wood stove, have just a heat pump with electric backup. That's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. You've always got that to fall back on. So these are these are some of the basics of the um, of the whole um, program. And um, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions or anything you might have. Darlene is here as well for that. Any questions? From the uh, hauling perspective, uh, do you have set places that the wood stoves can go or can we take it to anywhere that uh, accepts metal? Uh, all, all we really require is that the person is, uh, is, a, rec is a metal recycler. And see, when this program shows up in uh, other communities and municipalities, which most, most of these programs in BC are run through municipalities, they have the recycling yards. Um, and uh, we don't necessarily are uh, salt spring, they don't take metal. So, but there are several people that do uh, accept metal, including some of the wood stove in, in uh, companies such as uh, uh, the, the um, Home Design Center here on Salt Spring. So, they would take care of it. So, yes, uh, anybody who will receive your your metal and recycle it we just require a signature and and the stove has to be disabled which means it needs the flue has to be smashed the bricks taken out and the and the door glass broken that joyful experience mm. for someone to to take mm -hmm. <laughs> and then take a photo of it <laughs> take yeah. a photo of it show us you've done that mm -hmm. the idea is not to pass that wood stove on to your next door neighbor or to use it in the, in the shed. Uh, it's actually to get rid of it. So it doesn't. It really... um, yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Uh, mostly. So um, I can just take it to, to any recycler. Uh, doesn't matter um, as long as they're registered. Well, I don't think there is a registration. It's, we like to know the name of the company if it's a company. Otherwise, you know, we have identified um, several individuals and companies and and uh, recycling centers that will, including Heartland, um, that will take your your wood stoves. And so, uh, it has to just it has to ring true. I don't think we're, there's obviously people we don't know about that are maybe hauling off metal off, off your island, but uh, I I'm the metal hauler we're... off the island. Pardon, you, pardon me? I'm the metal hauler off the island. Okay, well, you're, you qualify. Yeah, so, but where do, so what I'm asking is, can I take it to wherever I want? So, um, like for Heartland, I pay $10 to enter, right? And then I give them metal for free. But they're, I can't remember the name of it, but they're um, right in the Sanitary Reservation there. They pay me per metal. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, should be fine. Okay, so I don't have to take it to specific places. Mm -mm. No, no. Okay. That's great. Just don't dump it over the bank. That's all. Oh. <laughs> Please. No, you get and and cast iron tends to be pretty heavy, so you get a pretty good price for cast iron. Mm. Yeah. Good to know. Well, you know, you're taking the trip over and your your time and so on. And that's worth something. So yep. yes, if you make some money from it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I, I adjust my rates accordingly. So um, for example, if I have to take it to a specific place, I have to increase my rates to account for that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Nope. nope. It's open yeah. that way. There's there are some very there's some fairly intensive mandatory pieces that the province imposes in this program, but um, we're trying to. Anywhere there's any flexibility, we want to offer it to make this program a bit more accessible, for sure. Oh, great! Because yeah, I'm registered with the CRD as a hauler. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and but like I say, I mean, I use the CRD for most of the stuff up at Heartland, but some things again, people either pay you for the trash that you have to pay at CRD. Um, so it's important to kind of know what we can do. Yep. 
That any sounds other, good. Yep. Any other questions from anybody? Karen, Karen at North Galliano, do you have any questions about this? No, um, it's all very interesting. I'm sure that I will develop questions once I look into it. Right, yep. More deeply. <laughs> We'll be sending you more documentation and so you'll have more to work with. Um, but certainly uh, we'll, we will be, we, we plan on uh, doing a webinar involving Salt Spring uh, Fire Department uh, in some of the, um, especially smart, uh, wood burning at smart, which uh, is so important to cleaning up our air. Because let's face it, a lot of us, are going to continue to burn wood, and uh, as, as it's, it's such a reliable and accessible fuel, um, but we do need to do it responsibly. I have a question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think many people in the Gulf Islands have wood stoves that are, I believe, EPA certified, and that they are insurable, but they're not necessarily efficient. And so, for instance, I know many people that are enticed by the idea of having a wood stove with, say, a catalytic catalytic converters to make it easier to keep the fire going overnight. But if they already have an insurable wood stove, my understanding is they don't qualify for this rebate. Is that accurate? Uh, that is a, it, in the original layout of the program, that was the case. It needed to be an uncertified stove, but we have managed to uh, uh, manage to get some elasticity on that rule. And so it is, it is basically, um, it, it takes a local coordinator, which in this case would be me, to see photos of the wood stove and see even if it is certified, it could quite likely and most likely um, be approved. Okay. Yeah. Let's face it, if you've got a five-year-old wood stove, you're probably not gonna exchange it, but if yours is nine or 10 or 12, but it's 20. still EPA approved. 20? 20, 50. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so they've become far more efficient. And so it's it would be worth an upgrade for sure. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. Rob, I was wondering, it's Nikki here from Pender. Um, hey, hi, are we, so when a person brings in a stove, are we responsible for making sure then that the flu is smashed and the bricks are out like we're not going to be just able to throw it in our scrap metal bin we're going to have to make sure it's all smashed and they, they have a photo of it or they they have to how they do that whether it's with you or by themselves they have to show us the photograph of it smashed okay and and um you would take it as is um i would think in most cases most people would do it themselves um unless someone wants to you know someone in your organization or other companies want to do it for them but we need to see the photo of it disabled yeah I, that's something i don't think that we would want to get into is is no hammering away at the wood stoves when they get dropped off no. <laughs> but, but you can help remind people to do if, if somehow you're taking possession of the stove and it hasn't been disabled you want to remind them that yeah it, that needs to be that way and that they need to take a picture of it to prove that it has been disabled well, they're going to be pretty disappointed if they get it in their truck and bring it all the way down and we tell them that it's not quite ready for recycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other question I had is that we charge $25 for wood stove drop off. That's our recycling fee. Mm -hmm. And are, so that is the person bringing it is going to be paying that it's not covered by the program then is that right? No, it's not covered by the program. They get they get $300. Right. For minimum $300 for taking part in the rebate okay. program. Okay. Okay. I just don't want to have any surprise charges that people aren't expecting, but mm -hmm. I think most people yeah. know about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the first uh, transition salt spring in order to get this underway and kind of give it a bit of a boost, we are offering uh, an additional hundred dollars on the, completion of the application for a wood wood to wood uh, transition and actually the we have um, pender island and moats or not say moats um, the home design center here each offering a 50 dollar 
discount as well on the purchase of a wood stove. So getting onto it early, uh, you could add an additional $150 to the 300 that you'll get from going wood to wood. For the, this will be available to the first 15, uh, the $100 will be available to the first 15 uh, completed applicants, which means actually they've submitted all their photos and everything's in order. And this, this program goes, by the way, till November 30th of this year. Right. So did you say it started April 5th or? April 4th. April 4th. The website will be open. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so as the recycler, we're going to, um, they're going to bring us some paperwork and we're going to sign off as the recipient of the stove. Is that, we, do we need anything here at the depot or is the person going to be bringing everything that they? Well, you know, I think we'll send you some, there's a few things. Uh, we'll send you some of our brochures. We'll also have our uh, a printable brochure online that doesn't have all the color, so your printer doesn't run out. And okay. um, and uh, so people will will know that they have this brochure with a signature page on it. If they don't have that and they have something with your logo on it, um, that would be fine too. Okay, and maybe we'll just have a spreadsheet that we keep in the office here where people can just record the person's name and phone number and the date or whatever so that if you need more information or it just wow. something to help us keep track of what's happening that's great that would be great thank you Nikki. you know you're the you're the only recycling center on the gulf islands that takes metal how is that we have a um a roll-off bin that we purchased and one of our neighbors will haul it into williams in victoria um, so it's just an arrangement that's been made privately. Somebody's willing to haul it for us and we've invested in the bin. So mm, yeah. that's great. Cool. Wish yeah. We had that. yeah. <laughs> I have one other question in terms of order of operations. Is there a way that someone can get more or less pre-approved before they smash the old stove? Yeah. Yes. Well, the pre-approval form, um, asks you what, uh, well, first of all, if it's certified, then we then um, I need to see it. I need to see a photograph of it. If it's an uncertified stove, no. Um, but the pre-approval form engages you with us to the, to the extent that we, we, we need to know, for example, we have, uh, have $15,000 to spend on Salt Spring and 15 on the Southern Gulf Islands. And that, so that's 50 wood stoves in, in each jurisdiction. Um, and so uh, we just need to know uh, what kind of demand there is and make sure that we don't run out of money. We don't commit that money um, to uh, overcommit that money. So we, we want to know, is it a wood stove you're going for or a heat pump? And we'd like to know what wood stove you're replacing. And that'd be in the early stages. So yes, we don't want you to, to find out that you don't qualify further down the line. In fact, I think that's something we might have to add in our in one of our documents just to make sure that that, that is um, people are aware of that. Yeah, I think it's it's good if the, the smashing of the old wood stove is the the, the penultimate step before getting payment. Um, Otherwise, you might have yeah. some unhappy people if funding oh runs out God. or the, what they buy it doesn't qualify. Or, yeah, absolutely. No, and and we do really appreciate that that you're running this through your uh, big brains, everybody, because it, it is the first time that we're doing this, so it is a learning curve for us, and it is it's a re, it's a somewhat complex. There's a quite a number of steps that people have to go through. So the more uh, accessible and the easier we can make all of this, the better. So we'd really appreciate your any feedback you have. I, I, mean, have a... well, I was going to say another way in terms of not having to smash a wood stove because sometimes maybe they're really stupid and well built you could have something like they could drop off the door somewhere else or something and then you separate the door from the stove or I'm just trying to think of you know people maybe well, smashing people who are the, elderly smashing and the, having yeah. to smash the flue and smash the glass and you have broken glass I don't know, there just seems to be problems. Sure, you, you could remove the door. You could, you, we do need to definitely see the, the flu smashed. Um, Bludgeon made, is the word they use, bludgeoned. Bludgeon, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, we just want to make sure that it's not going to be used again. So you show us photograph evidence of what um, uh, that and the recycling centers um, signature and that we're pretty sure that you're not going to be reusing that stove unless you're paying that recycling center under the table. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing, of course, we want to see the wood stove in its original setting as well, so that you haven't, not that you would, Jesse, but um, grab some old wood stove from a neighbor and take him some pictures and smash that. And now you get to, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So people take a picture of the old wood stove in its setting. They take it out, they disable it, bludgeon it, uh, take a picture of that. And then when the new wood stove is in this exact same spot, they also need to take a picture of that new wood stove in that spot. Yeah. So a few steps. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Karen? Yeah, I have a monthly uh, column that I do in, in our, our local paper. It's too late for April now, but um, do you have, do you have a little press release, a couple few paragraphs that I can include and to publicize I'll be, this? I'll be sending one out real soon, actually, probably in the day, in the next day. So Karen, I'll get that over to you. So when is your next deadline? It won't be until the middle of next month. So okay. it, it, the May issue is the earliest. Sure. Perfect. Okay. By then we might, uh, we might have set a date for a webinar as well. So we'll keep you posted on that. But yes, we'll get you some information on that. Thanks for mentioning that. Great, thanks. In fact, that's the request that we have of all of you is, uh, is to really help us promote the program as much as possible. We don't expect you to be experts in all the steps, but to just try to inspire and motivate people to at least get in touch with us and find out more about it. That would just be a huge help. So if you've got any social media channels, um, print media on your website or any other place that you think it might be useful. Rob's also, uh, as he said at the beginning, has some posters that we can send over to you to put up in your in a physical office space. If anybody has a physical office space anymore, um, we're happy to send over some posters for you to hang that way. So um, do let us know what you need to help promote the program and we'll create it. So for example, if you follow Transition Salt Spring on Facebook and on Instagram, you'll see a, a number of different things appearing in the, in the coming weeks around the wood stove program. And you can just share those posts on your own social media feeds. I think that might be it, Rob. I don't know about if you're, if there's any I think, last uh, words or questions out there. Well, there's one, one, one page I just wanted to share with folks that, okay. that really got my attention. And, and it was the, uh, it's on safari I had to hear. Yeah, it's a study done by the government, uh, state of Washington, and it's about the harms of wood, wood smoke. And mm -hmm. there's just a, a picture that, that really struck. Uh, this is it here. Those, those PM2s in that image show you how small they are. Mm. And they get they get through our our uh, alveoli into our blood, mm. and um, they get in, reach the deepest areas of the of, of of our lungs. So this is this is um, this might be explain why I have some health issues. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty serious stuff when you think of it. I think we've we've all learned to minimize. Um, would would smoke and its effects, but it's it's a very serious thing for mm -hmm. people's health and the emissions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I think that wraps it up. Um, I'm very pleased to have gone through this with you folks and shared this with you and and your openness and your questions to help us refine it too is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay in touch, everybody. We'll keep you posted and thank yep. you very much for attending. Thanks all, enjoy your days. Bye-bye. Bye now.